Hello there guys, welcome back to the e-bike repairs YouTube channel. My name's Dash and I take apart and I fix fun stuff. Super fun and exciting things. So e-bike batteries, motors, scooters, all that. I've got in this today, it's a Sondors battery. Oh, we've got a cable halfway across the screen. Why have I done that? That's going to be distracting. Sorry about that. There we go. Uh, this is a Sondors Fold battery. Uh, it's a bit like that Ray Enchen case that slides in, but it's a big one with rails. Very exciting. Sondors. I haven't seen any videos on this actually, so uh, that's interesting. Uh, Sondors uses genuine LG cells for this 14 amp hour battery. Battery off, plug in. 48 volt, 14 amp hour, 13S, 4P of LG MJ1 cells. Do not incinerate. More stickers. Another sticker. It's all very exciting. I left, I've cut these already, uh, but I've left the big peel because it says peel here to remove. I thought we all like a peel, don't we? That was not very air, so I might have just yank it off. But... Peely sticker. Right, oh, I'm going to stick that to my ceiling. Right above the camera. There you go. Free sticker. Um, okay. We've got on off switch here. On off, on off, on off. Charge port here, which is just a DC barrel jack with a little rubber flap cover. <coughs> We've got our discharge pins here. I checked on the bike. This does not use a smart BMS. Uh, there's just two wires coming out, uh, going into the controller on the bike. So two sides are positive and two sides are negative, And it seems that the pins are doubled up on the bike side. Don't know about this side, but for more current carrying capacity, it's not just got four pins and only using two. It's using four pins and using all four, but split into two halves. We've got screws, so many screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven screws we've got. We've got a key barrel at the end. Lock comes out, lock goes in. Key won't come out when it's in the unlocked position. Key will only come out in the locked position. It looks to be uh, like a Ray Enchen key with a little, um, it's not round, that bit's missing. Let's pop the screws out and have a look. They look to be just Phillips screws. Yep. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of your finest screws, please, sir. Um, where do I put them? I've run out of trays. I haven't run out of trays. There's just one that's moved to a different place. Tray. Very clean tray that. Lovely. Not full of any dead bugs. It's fine. Let's see how many more we got out of that. I see uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need two more. Two more screws, please. Where are you? You're not coming out? Okay. There's one. Oh, there's one. It run away. There's one just here. That's eleven. And then screw-wise, they look like that. They're all identical. There's just sort of go into plastic, classic high long type screws, and they've got heads of Phillips, Posi, whatever variety. Let's see how we open this up then. Oh, this end. This end. And it just, oh, just pops straight open. That's nice, isn't it? Okay, the pack's not that horrid. It's, it's a bit horrid, but it's not that horrid. Normal wrench and style key barrel, but with a, a lock me key in type feature. That's fine. That goes there. I'll probably put that in the box. We've got a discharge fuse under here. It looks to be a 30 amp discharge fuse and uh, like an XT60 type plug here. No, not an XT60 type plug, bullet connectors. God, I haven't seen bullet connectors in ages. Last time I saw bullet connectors was on LiPo batteries and on um, GTEC batteries. We've got a bullet connector there. We've got a switch for the on off here or a connector for the on off and then we've got is this a Dean's connector under here? Somebody told me it was a Dean's connector on one of the videos when I looked at it before. It's like a funny one where it's like a T piece. 
yeah, that thing on the charge port. That's all good. All right, that side of the case we don't really need. It all looks pretty good, pretty robust. It's barely flexible at all. We've got our, I don't know what kind of plastic you'd call that. Black plastic. I don't see anywhere that it says, you know, ABS or whatever. Um, no. All looks all right to me, to be honest. Looks like a bike case, or battery case. And then on this side, we've got our BMS is on top of a little plate here. And there's solder mask or something in the screws. Yep, meaning that that's impossible to get out. Fantastic. I have to get a pick and try and see if I can get that out of the screw head. Oh, that's gone into my hand. Lovely. Yeah, I got one out. It's always nice. There's two. There's three. These are just tiny little things. All right, this one, have I rounded this one off already? Probably. No, it's fine. Oh, lost the screw. Found the screw. Right, that's those four of those out. So the BMS should be free now. Yes, it is. Look at that. Fantastic. Which means I can pull all the cells out. Like that. There you go. Cell pack is out. There's the other side of the case. It's again the same super rigid. Feels like a nice case. Look at all these reinforcing ribs it's got around it. It's not bad. Someone's obviously put a lot of design into that. I didn't see anywhere that it said um, wrenching or anything like that on it, on either side. I don't see anything that identifies what kind of plastic it is at a bit of a cursory glance. No, I'm not sure. Often it says, but not on this one. Maybe it does, but I've not found it. Right, so... <clears throat> Cell-wise, we do in fact have LG MJ1 cells. These look like... They don't look the same as the LG MJ1 cells I get. Why that is, don't know, but they don't look the same. Uh, I'm looking for my little cutters. They're on the floor over here, because of course they are. Why would they be where I need them to be? Snip that little cable tie, get that off. Okay, we've got temp sensor over there. Let's have that out. Charge wire. Charge wire positive, which is just joined straight to that. And that goes straight out of there, and there's that. Yep, that looks like a battery, and this part's held on with a wire. Don't really like that, but you know, what can I do? Let's check the balance leads out, shall we? Out freedom. Okay. Let's see what these cells seem to measure. Do 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 do. That out of the way. Right. I can see that. And you might be able to see that as well. All this glare on the screen. Oh no, you can see that. Let's go from one end of the pack to the other end of the pack. And we've got 50 volts. That's not bad. 50 volts is quite a lot of volts. Three point nine. 
3.9 and 3.9 volts. So the cells are either okay or they're pretending to be okay and the minute you put any load on them they stop being okay. I'm going to have to take this over to the uh, discharge tester which does not test, well it does test discharge but not you know. <laughs> it tests the discharge capabilities of a battery pack. That's what it does. Uh, I'm going to wang it straight on at 20 amps. If 4P of MJ1s can't handle 20 amps, it's not great. Because... Uh, it's this uh, little calculator thing. LG MJ1 cells, 13S 4P, should be able to handle 40 amps. And 20 amps is half of the rated current. Therefore, it should be able to deal with it. If it can't, it's not very good. Um, you know, you'll get some voltage sag. They're still MJ1s, you know, they're realistically, they're, you know, they're topping out about 5 amps. They're not really very really happy above 5 amps. Um, even though it thinks that they could do 10 amps, that you'll get a terrible voltage sag. But yeah, so that, that's what it, it should perform as. So I should get around 664 watt hours. You know, it's, it, it's, it's old, this battery, you know, it's not new. But um, we'll see. I'll come back to you with what I find.